got a good sized panel today. Just give me your name and your company and uh, what city you're coming from today. And we'll, uh, we'll start at the end. Hi, hello everyone. I'm Ji Han from Peter May. I'm the co founder and director of the company. Hi, I'm Guy Kowem. I'm the CEO and founder of Spondulis Tech. I'm coming from Hello, I'm Marco Spring, um, CEO of JLSS Mining. Uh, we're a cloud mining company, and uh, I'm coming from uh, Germany. I'm Andrew Yashuk, I'm uh, from Chicago. Uh, currently, I'm working on hardware integration for storage. Good afternoon, I'm Francois Poupard, I'm CEO and founder of Beacon Box, and also um, founder of a mining farm based in the US, but uh, I'm still uh, living in Paris. Very good, thank you, gentlemen. So, I think the first question that's on everybody's mind this last 12 months, obviously we've had a big price change, and we all know that that has an effect on the economics uh, for miners. And uh, you know, before I get into those questions of consolidation, I just want to take a quick poll of the audience and kind of get a sense for where everybody's at. Quick show of hands, who's already familiar with the basics of mining? Give me, give me a good sense. Pretty much everybody in the room has a good sense of mining, so I won't delve too much into the, uh, the beginner stuff. Why don't we jump right into consolidation? We're starting to see some mining companies buying other mining companies, uh, some groups moving out of the ecosystem. Give me a sense for where consolidation is going, what's the pace of consolidation, and what's the end state? Where do we get in 12 months if the price were to stay, let's say, at a, a similar level to today, what, what does that do to consolidation? We're going to start at the end here. Uh, I think um, the mining will be consolidating to those uh, low cost areas, uh, especially the uh, electricity cost. And uh, the, the cost to build the mining farm is also important. Uh, so that's why China maybe is not the lowest uh, cost in electricity, but uh, it's uh, now have the most uh, hashing rate over the world because the uh, capex in China to build a mining farm is very low. Um, and uh, those uh, there are not uh, too much choices in this world, I think, to my big hole. Uh, Iceland, uh, maybe Washington, Canada, China, or I don't have uh, seen much uh, area uh, choice uh, in this world. Um, but, but maybe more. So some uh, in, uh, as far as I know, sometimes in China, there are some special resources for some people to get a very low cost uh, electricity. For example, they may be a farmer, uh, they get uh, some kind of, uh, 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 maybe, um, subsidy. Yes, a subsidiary from government, so the electricity is no, so they get to warm up their, uh, their farms, things like that. Well, what's the feeling on the panel? Is that the primary thing driving consolidation? Do you think it's electric prices and those that can really find cheap electricity and compete on that basis? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, you know, um, a year ago when the Bitcoin price was significantly higher, um, electricity prices were not that efficient, uh, were, were not that um, uh, yeah, uh, significant uh, for the whole calculation of mining. But uh, now, since the price uh, got it, it dropped uh, quite significantly, um, it is it is the most uh, it is the component that determines your competitiveness in the market, and this is also the component that drives the co uh, the consolidation in the market. So um, the people at, there is at the moment a kind of uh, war on the electricity sweet spots on the planet. Um, everybody wants to get the most efficient uh, places, and uh, companies like like uh, Genesis Mining. Uh, or others uh, um, established player in the market um, uh, achieve have the, their goal to get these um, these best places, high, highest efficiency places, to de deploy their uh, massive farms there, and then offer users uh, the, op the opportunity to, to purchase and invest in mining and hash power at, at these um, locations instead of having to purchase miners and building it them up at home. So. Uh, electricity prices, in short, are the key driver of, of uh, consolidation that is currently happening in the market. And I'm curious, the next physical barrier that the network is going to come upon is obviously the next uh, block reward happening. As everybody knows, every four years, the block reward halves originally was 
50 bitcoins per block. Today it's 25 bitcoins per block. In 2016, we'll get to our next halving just next year um, to uh, that new 12.5 uh, bitcoins per block level. Do you think that will have a similar effect as it did last time? Um, if, let's say, the price continues at the current level, whether that will really change the economics for, uh, for miners? So, um, first of all, regarding consolidation, so we just uh, announced our uh, plan to merge with the Bitcoin shop VTCS uh, this morning. So you can say that um, we are uh, post consolidation. Uh, for us, um, the reason was uh, the need to uh, move to. Um, you know, in the past, you, you could have uh, done pretty good business by by selling miners, but as um, as the ecosystem progresses and of course block having will, will have that, that effect multiply. Um, you, you expect ROI on much longer terms. So uh, instead of selling the machines, you, send, you, uh, you need to mine, you wait 24 months and, and to recover the investment, etc. So it, it forces uh, uh, to, do, uh, to move to uh, other uh, uh, additional uh, business practices that other companies uh, in this field did. Regarding uh, uh, block halving, uh, uh, for sure, I think that um, if, if you assume uh, current Bitcoin price will, will remain the same around September 2016, and unless um, there will be a um, significantly more advanced uh, technology out there, uh, it, it will have a huge, uh, huge impact. I think that uh, only the strongest uh, com companies the one that can deploy at a very low cost, uh, we will remain in the game. Yeah. That's, that's my opinion. Uh, and additional to that, uh, I think it's completely correct. And uh, I think that um, game theoretically, uh, mining is really um, a business where uh, the ones who have the highest efficiency with the hardware and the highest efficiency uh, due to their infrastructure, uh, electricity prices and so on, have the best spot. So that means they are able to continue mining while others uh, are in the reds, while others have higher expenses than their rewards, and they have to drop out. And if they drop out, uh, according to the roots of Bitcoin and the, the roots of, of mining in general, um, the, the pie that is given out by the, by the network, these 3,600 Bitcoins currently per day, are spread amongst the, the players who continue to mine. So they will be more profitable, others have to drop out. So that means if the block halving is occurring, that means a, a huge hit by the ones that are not in the most efficient position because they all need to drop out, but the ones who stay in the market still get the, get the pie. Right. Well, how does the change in difficulty that we're seeing, Andrew, start to play into this equation? Um, obviously, we've seen a slowing of that difficulty rise. Um, as one, we've almost caught up with Moore's Law. Uh, as far as the size of nanometers that are the state of the art, uh, obviously that has played a factor as well as the uh, price has played a factor in, in slowing the difficulty rate. I've seen some projections say it's going to double or triple this year. Obviously that's a much slower rate of increase than we've seen in the past. Uh, do you think that will lend itself to these miners continuing to be profitable? Um, I think there are a lot of miners today that are still profitable by very tiny margin, but they're forced to sell their bitcoins. So actually, um, when the reward halves, if they don't have reserves, they, they will have to stop. I think the difficulty is, or do you think, think do you have the price effect large enough to change that equation? I yeah. guess that would be the other possible. I think what's also happening now with the difficulty is, you could say it's, relatively speaking, it's kind of flat, is because there's a lot of substitution in hardware that's occurring. I do not think it's going to remain flat because there are several companies basically getting ready to deploy massive amounts of hash and power uh, on the of the network. Of next gen. Yes, yeah. yeah, next generation. Well, that's, that was going to be my next question. Um, we're hearing rumors about 60 nanometers. Um, some people are making claims that that's where the next chips are going to be. Can you give us some insight about that, the next generation? And feel free to jump into the other question. Yes, why? So it definitely a, a race for critical size. I mean, it's all about large square now. Um, including, looking for cheap power, but uh, I mean, considering the next uh, block reward uh, and the evolution, uh, consolidation is endeavor as um, large squares and uh, big uh, 
uh, farms will take hold in the future. Current total uh, hash rate power is um, 340 pH per second, and as, uh, looking at the backlog of the biggest um, manufacturer, we expect it to triple in 2015. So it's quite, uh, it's quite important as a well. question. Spondo, I know you have uh, thoughts on the next generation as well. I'm going to get you to speak on that. I must say that this industry has a lot of rumors, and uh, <laughs> say, it, it makes sense to spread a rumor to uh, deter the, the opponent, etc. So it's, it's really hard to, to, to know what, what's true and what's not. But I think that we can expect by the end of 2015 um, to have um, something between twice or, or three times the, the current amount of hash rate. Um, we, we were starting to see um, next gen. Uh, sub 0 0.3, sub 0 0.25 Java per giga machines uh, pretty soon. Uh, pretty soon, quarter, two quarters, um, and of course it, it will affect uh, the, the action. I think that uh, the limiting factor uh, will become access to funds and access to uh, low cost electricity. Now, there's also been a big change where it the actual mining is taking place. We've seen geographies become much more uh, substantially important. Um, you mentioned earlier um, China has really taken a big lead now. Uh, China, Mongolia, the, the whole area uh, where mining is taking place. Can you give us some more color on why you think that transition is happening? Is it purely driven by electricity? Is it a combination of other cost factors? Or is there um, some, as you said, subsidy or something that's really driving that behavior? Uh, yes, uh, it's a combination of uh, cost. Uh, it's the first thing uh, because Bitmain's uh, production center is based in Shenzhen, and uh, the uh, shipping cost uh, from Shenzhen to China uh, uh, nationwide is uh, much much lower than it's shipping to North America or it's shipping to Europe. Uh, so, if we price a manner at the um, same price, and uh, Chinese manner will think it's uh, very fair and a uh, very good price, but maybe Western manners will think it is too much, too high. Um, and uh, right now in the market, maybe Bitmain provides a, um, a dominant choice uh, for the manners. Uh, uh, some of other places are running out of stock, and uh, some of them out of business. Um, so. Uh, Bitmain produce a lot of many rigs and uh, most of them are, are sold uh, in China. And uh, the capex, which means uh, the cost to build a mining farm, if we measure uh, how many money we, uh, how much money we spend uh, per uh, megawatts in China is much much cheaper. So it means that uh, Chinese people can build a mining farm at a, uh, with uh, less funding rates. Uh, and, but this is not the case in US or in Europe. The regulation and the labor cost is very high and the land is um, more expensive. So it costs uh, too much money there to build a mining farm. Um, but I think this uh, situation will change maybe in the next half a year or one year because uh, the hydro power in uh, North America is um, less expensive than China. Mm. And uh, maybe we can find some way to lower the expenses to build the mining farm. And uh, if we depreciate this uh, capex in longer term, maybe it more, uh, it's more, uh, it's less cheap, uh, it's less expensive than doing it in China. Um, but it's, the shipping cost is still a problem because uh, the mining rig right now uh, has uh, lots of uh, heat sinks, which is very heavy. and. Uh, uh, we give the shipping by air, um, it's uh, quite expensive. Mm -hmm. Well, and I want to bring it back to this side of the panel and talk about deeper into these incentives. We've talked a little bit about the costs that are driving people into different jurisdictions. Uh, we've talked about the technologies and advancing, and everybody's competing to get the smallest and intermediate. But I'm interested if folks on the panel are seeing, starting to see other revenue streams that people are proposing or exploring. Um, there's been talk of financial institutions that may be interested in getting involved or working on top of the Bitcoin rails 
have a vested interest in running some of those nodes, conducting some of the mining, not necessarily even for uh, the Bitcoin, but for being participants in setting policy of the network. Would you speak a little to that if you're hearing about that, if you see that as a potential yes. in the future? Yes, actually there are um, several banks, it's not very, very public, but they have been investing um, tens of millions in um, mining hardware. And um, beyond that, I would say, there is a need for uh, edging because there is a strong pressure on the margin of the mi mining farms and operation. So uh, we are seeing some um, new um, trading instruments like Turbo Varan or uh, Black for Difference being used on a more common basis uh, to protect the margin against uh, price fluctuation of Bitcoin. And last year, the drop um, has, been, uh, has been tough for many of the, of the mining operations. That's a pretty incredible statement. You're seeing that there are banks out there that are starting to take an active interest in mining. Are they, from what you've heard, uh, interested in mining themselves, or are they partnering with existing companies? So they're providing the, the capex and the debt to set up the innovation. So they're getting involved in the investing side. Yes. Um, I, I can tell from, our, from my uh, own experience. I mean, we have funds that invest in us, and that uh, yeah, are um, upgrading their their hash power, or investing in, investing in mining, and they're frequently routinely upgrading their their stock. So, and that that's quite significant amounts of money that is flowing in there, and. Um, Outside of that, I also know that from bigger financial institutions uh, that want to leverage in Bitcoin and searching for a way how to enter the market the most efficient way, we also have uh, partners that are looking for us to um, to buy uh, significant amounts of uh, of Bitcoins over the counter. Um, so they don't they say they don't want to go on an exchange. Um, they go to us directly and buy uh, buy uh, Bitcoins that we freshly mined. Um, straight away mm -hmm. without letting anybody know so uh, because buying on the market would immediately mean uh, impacting the price uh, buying over the counter uh, means no impact of the price is there any interest on that front when it comes to having coins that have never had other transactions involved virgin is that yeah virgin coins that reduce the uh, regulatory risk is that part of the thought process for them um, I think uh, it's more modern, it's more directly um, financial uh, oriented discounts or uh, um, yeah, uh, saving, uh, yeah, saving, basically saving money and uh, getting assured liquidity over a time without uh, influencing the market. But I know it's, it's right, there is a component to it that uh, some businesses prefer to have freshly mined coins. Um, yeah. So, so, so Marco, the price is not going up because you're doing OTC deals instead of saying <laughs> OTC change. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, I want to get into another aspect here. Um, uh, probably most of the audience are familiar. How many folks are familiar with uh, cloud mining? Cloud mining aspects? Okay. So we've also seen as the individual miners have moved out of the market of a, you know, uh, home miners, if you will, uh, to become an industrial mining game. Um, there's also been a lot of people, well, okay, I want to use uh, cloud mining in order to uh, still be part of this. But we've obviously seen a number of surveys, many of the cloud mining uh, projects have been accused of uh, running schemes where they don't have as many Bitcoin as they claim. Um, I want to challenge you guys to, where is the solution here for individuals that want to be involved in cloud mining? How do they know and how can they differentiate between groups that are going to disappear tomorrow and, and groups that can actually prove that they're doing the mining they say they're doing. Andrew, do you want to start? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think uh, the short-term solution would be some kind of a physical audit, the traditional way. Uh, Long-term solution, I think it would be important for ASIC manufacturers to design the chips in such a way that the miner who's purchasing that mining contract can have cryptographic proof that their mining contract is running on X number of physical chips, and it is their contract. Right, correct. I think that uh, those are very important points. Um, I want to give uh, some more points for uh, for the uh, short-term future. Uh, for example, especially now, um, because really this mar uh, the cloud mining market, um, uh, yeah, uh, suffers quite some reputation uh, because there is a lot uh, there is a lot of uh, growing fraud uh, occurring. 
um, because you have to see, I mean, it's a very profitable business for uh, for someone who want to to uh, yeah to um, how can I say to, to to do fraud and to to get a lot of money anonymously. You know, I, I ju just to explain uh, that to to everybody um, because it's very critical. For example, someone uh, who says yeah. Um, I want to, yeah, I want to run an anonymous business. It's a perfect way to start a cloud mining operation. Anonymous, don't buy any miners. Take money from the clients, claim that you are mining, and then paying out uh, everyday coins to the clients as if they would mine. Similar, uh, roughly the similar amounts, or give them uh, eventually even an unrealistically higher uh, reward, and they think, oh, the, the, those uh, operations have uh, magic machines. They're even more profitable than the, than the real ones. And uh, that, of course, drives and uh, spreads word of mouth. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm approaching my ROI already with this operation, but in the end, there is actually nothing uh, in the bag, and it's just a pure Ponzi. And we have seen that quite a lot in the past. Um, uh, operations have started, uh, grown extremely fast, um, and collapsed after three months, and uh, just ran away with all the, uh, the money of the clients. And they have nothing to lose. They are anonymous. So they started. They make a pseudo-anonymity, they uh, uh, register the homepage under a, a pseudonym, and, um, and then when they have enough money, they just shut it down, run away. And it is so crazy, actually, and so cruel, that uh, there was one uh, cloud mining company that made the same scheme, and in the end, they, uh, they played a song, Leave It Go or Leave It Be, or something like that, on their homepage, and just vanished. It's uh, ridiculous, and I think it's very important to educate people um, so that they are not running in any kinds of this trap. And I think my last estimation was there that there are at the moment about, uh, at least my count, about 38 cloud mining company, and at least 29 of them were very highly, uh, uh, very likely fraudulent. And uh, just to name uh, maybe two points for immediate future, because now at the moment there is no kind of validation system that gives anyone a certainty that something is real or not. I think it's now really depending on the customer. Um, and I think maybe those, uh, maybe the most important points um, to recognize and not go into a, uh, fall into a trap is, first of all, does a cloud mining comp uh, company show pictures of their miners and farms? Um, are they really there? Uh, if necessary, to, uh, approach them and ask them whether they can give, get a trip uh, through, uh, uh, through the farms. For example, we do it by uh, providing helicopter rides uh, for our bigger clients in Iceland over our facilities. Uh, secondly, um, uh, is the product itself or is the, are the prices realistic? Um, Realistic, it's very difficult for, for, any, for an outsider or someone who is new to the market to see what is a realistic price. But uh, you can, for example, take our price a bit as a reference and see if it's too way off. If it's really too way off, then you can at least uh, conclude that eventually there is something, something wrong. And um, I think the third one is, uh, for example, the, the, there are cloud mining operations who are uh, offering services like Click a button and boost the miner. Boost the miner now for three hours and get double of the payout. So, so, something is so irrational. It's not possible. Uh, I, mean, I mean, if it would be possible, why, didn't we, why don't you want a tour go all the time, right? Why should you boost it? Uh, every day you're only allowed to boost it uh, three hours or something. So that also happens. So is the product realistic? Is the price uh, realistic? Do, is the transparency there? And m most important, are the owners anonymous. If they are anonymous, there is every alarm bell needs to ring actually because there is no real reason why a cloud mining operator should be anonymous uh, if they have nothing to hide. Right. Well, no, I appreciate those points, and I think it can all be summed up by saying: do your due diligence. Yes. Yeah. Be careful about what you buy. Don't just take claims at face value yeah. when you're getting into. And and we are trying to to establish or uh, we. Uh, we want to uh, establish a kind of um, uh, validation that is not oriented by us. Of course, uh, users shall validate uh, and give the kind of give, give the operation kind of validation that, that they are really valid. But at the moment, it's not. There is not su no such a system. So it's really up to the users, the individual users. Everybody should be educated and do their due diligence before uh, going into the wrong direction and falling into any of these. Anonymous traps. And that's, that's really important to cover. And the last topic before we get into questions, we have about 10 minutes left. 
Uh, I just want to ask real quickly about what the funding environment is like. And um, are people having trouble raising capital as we go to the next set of chips? Um, and is that going to further um, cause consolidation in the market if people can't make that leap to, uh, to the next level? So, so on one side, we've seen uh, 21 huge investment. Um, most of it will go probably uh, towards mining, no matter what, what they're saying. And, and uh, we've seen KNC um, uh, around, we've seen last year's uh, review rounds. So um, you see all the mining companies, and, and of course, Bitcoin Tech is here because I think down the road they will be interested in external funding, and we did our move uh, again to uh, increase our access to uh, to funds. So yes, uh, funding is uh, is very important, and, and as we progress uh, in the generations, the NREs, the non-recurring engineering, is becoming more and more uh, significant. You know, doing uh, 16 nanometer or 14 nanometer is is costly, and of course production runs, etc. Uh, repairing the, the mining facility, so um, all those stuff are, are um, extremely uh, cash intensive and, and um, it, it's, um, the, the drop in Bitcoin price doesn't help, uh, but I think that, that um, there, will, there are uh, real opportunities uh, uh, to, uh, to see funds in, into, this, uh, system, into this business. Um, the issue is that um, um, a lot of the um, the funding opportunities of the people that interested are to invest are looking at the short-term ROI, which, for example, yeah. Genesis Mining is better equipped, you know. We, put, we, we give you money, you give us down the road such and such percentage. And versus doing uh, hardcore uh, development into a cheap design, etc., etc., which is more risky uh, business. Yeah, but also on that, uh, I, I think we all agree mining shifted from uh, last year uh, in, within a three months period of ROI uh, frame into a more longer uh, time frame uh, investment. Uh, but that doesn't mean that it's getting worse. I think that uh, opens up new opportunities because it's all about, as I explained before, having the most efficient uh, uh, infrastructure and efficient uh, hardware. And when these uh, two come together, you have a competitive advantage. And as long as you have this competitive advantage, that means that you are always in the market and when you are approaching a kind of a level where uh, it's getting unprofitable when you are the, the, the most efficient miner others are uh, stepping out before you that means they go out of the space and leave you uh, leave the reward for you that means that your profitability will increase again so if you have this kind of efficiency efficiency degree um, it's a real opportunity but it's a long a longer time frame and it's not only about three months of ROI or something like that very good. Well, I want to take a, a few minutes for questions. We have about seven minutes left. I think we have a mic. If we don't have a mic, speak loudly. But um, let's go ahead and open it up. Uh, we do have a mic right here. So go ahead and raise your hand. Whoever has the first question will get started. How much uh, adversarial attacks are you guys facing um, in your operation and networks? Such as like hacking and DDoS and stuff like that. We had one occasion in which, um, through um, social engineering, an uh, email to for a data, data center operator, um, the, the small data center that we have in Israel have been hacked a few hours until we, we, we came in. So it happens for us once. Yeah. Uh, for us, it happens uh, on the on the software uh, on the homepage side. Uh, attacks are happening every day. Uh, I mean, for hackers, I think Bitcoin is generally. Uh, Everybody knows that it's a, it's a, it's the big treasure, right? So, um, and when you're uh, in, in the mine, the big mining operators uh, are the, the most, uh, um, yeah, the all, and the exchanges are the the, the the most important aims for them, and um, and we see that uh, on the homepage side and also on our mining facilities. In the mining facilities specifically, because there's so much money involved in one of these places. Um, and uh, we, for example, we had also uh, industrialized espionage. There was one guy came coming to us uh, with an SUV uh, completely yeah, out of the blue and started to ask questions and he couldn't actually, it was very bad, badly done. So he could, didn't even have a plausible answer uh, why he's here. So he should at least have uh, thought about a, a nice answer that is not so obvious, right? 
uh, you shoot him. Uh, I think he's still alive. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so it's, I mean, and, and yeah, so this is espionage is happening, and also, um, yeah, um, I think regarding the security, it's it's critical. So we, we also have alarm system, we have se uh, sensors uh, um, um, uh, that, that, that track motion, and uh, Yes, and uh, we do our best. Really, we, we we work together with a security company that is uh, that is really focusing on, on on keeping the site safe. I think we had another uh, question over here. Yeah. Oh hi. Okay, guys. Uh, I heard you saying about the the provision of the hash hate coming up three times, uh, as we have right now. And my question. Um, I've been mining, you, everybody know, know me there, I've been mining for three years, and like, um, my question is, we are going to, to uh, new chips, new ASICs, and everybody knows that we are coming, going to SUP 30, 28, uh, we, don't, we don't know for sure, but my question is, if we are going to three times the hash hate that we have right now, uh, even those new ASICs, they, they will be unprofitable. Um, so that's my question. Who's gonna control that hash hate? Because if, if if it's going three three times that if we see three times hash hate right now that we have, yeah. even new miners, we are talking about the new ones, the the new generation, they will be unprofitable. So yeah. like uh, that is my question. Thank you. Uh, first, uh, when those uh, new um, ASICs come into the market. Uh, older generation will be driving out of the market. So if we produce uh, the many rigs doubles the difficulty, and we will find that the difficulty may increase only 20% or 30%. So the new, uh, the older generation will be driving out of the market. So that's the first thing um, for, um, or, or the most important reason to produce a new asset generation of basics. And, uh, Maybe there is a hope that the exchange rate will be rise. So this is uh, another kind of uh, uh, speculation. Because uh, when you uh, produce uh, many rigs, um, if you assume that the price is uh, stable, um, however, if the exchange rate of Bitcoin uh, increase 1%, you will find the value of the many rigs maybe have 2% or 3% of increase. So this kind of a leverage to um, bet that Bitcoin uh, increasing. Um, and take a very um, brief example, if uh, your mining rigs are running at uh, now 10% uh, margin rate, uh, gross margin, uh, maybe it's uh, almost the worst thing. But if the Bitcoin uh, price doubles, so your mining rigs are worse or not. So this is kind of an average. So that's why people are still buying mining rigs now, yeah. and this is one of the reasons, because um, and other leverages, uh, and uh, some of the players in the market think that they can uh, plant their hash cores into the TV set or the routers, so they will have a essentially free electricity. Um, though I think this idea is a little bit crazy, but it <laughs> just can't have a <laughs> rationale. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, just one thing, I, I think this is a very critical uh, point and uh, probably the most important question for every miner. And I can uh, assure you, although uh, very few points are certain in the mining business, but I can tell you that uh, a scenario where uh, it, it would be unprofitable for all miners that will not happen. Because this cannot happen, because uh, then nobody would mine, right? So it's, it's always like that. Um, uh, it can only be uh, unprofitable for some persons in the in the, the spot, and that is why because other persons, other miners are in a better efficiency spot where they still continue uh, to make profit while others have worse conditions and they have to drop out. And um, and that way, I think uh, I, I agree to to Chian. Um, if you uh, if you are, I, I think at the moment there. It's, it's a real opportunity, especially the prices due to the Bitcoin uh, drop. 
um, um, hardware manufacturers are giving out hardware for very, very cheap prices. That means if you are going now into the mining business um, and the prices are rising, that will become a huge rush again. And I can only tell you uh, what we have experienced at the end of 2013 when the price rose from 100 to 1,000. Um, it was incredible, right? Everybody saw, oh no, um, the price is now at 1,000. Oh my God, I missed to buy a, 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 a before uh, where the Bitcoin price was 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 uh, low, so now okay, I just buy miners. It's still a, a, a way to to get cheap Bitcoin, but everybody uh, thinks so and knows that. So everybody blasts huge amounts of of money in in mining. The problem is that uh, there are not endless chips, right? And there are not endless uh, capacities uh, on the planet. So there would be a huge rush, and uh, at some point, uh, all the mining hardware will be sold out again if the Bitcoin price is. is Rising, so you, it needs to be waited until new chips are produced. So, sure. the, in at that scenario, clearly everybody who already has miners or already bought hash power in the cloud will be in a much more favorable position. Yeah. So I think we have time for just one more question. Uh, I've got one back here in the white, and I'm sure you can uh, corner these guys afterwards. Be happy to talk with you as well. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Uh, my question is. Um, if all this development, um, if it benefits chip development and electricity production outside of Bitcoin in general. Will we start moving Moore's Law forward? It's a good question. Who wants to tackle it? Um, um, this question, uh, have, I think it is a very long-term question that I think if the coin do not man, we cannot see a signal that people are putting confidence, real confidence, into this coin. So lots of coins are doing POS or some other kind of algorithm that don't need to man. But then you cannot find any evidence that people are very confident about this coin. Uh, because if you don't see people are investing money into their mining business, um, and I think Satoshi's design for the Bitcoin is very small that the uh, reward for every block is halved every four years, which means that this is not an endless game. At least for the first years of the coin, people will see the confidence, real confidence, real investment uh, from the hash rate increase. Uh, I think that's uh, one of the reasons. Uh, if a coin want to be successful, we should start to man. And yes, lots of um, money are spent on the hardware, on the electricity. But if without kind of this kind of expenditure, actually it's not so that much uh, compared with uh, some other kind of uh, clearing system in the financial uh, market. Uh, this deliver a very much clear signal that people are confident uh, in this um, new asset. So, with all the respect uh, to Bitcoin, I have a lot of respect. I don't think that um, Bitcoin has enough uh, financial incentive uh, to uh, drive or improve Moore's law. You know, uh, it's still tiny, tiny industry compared to mobile or whatever. So, the, the incentive to uh, keep keep producing. Uh, Better and better processes uh, with, with um, smaller and smaller a gap is there um, without regards to bitcoins. But but um, the same process node on, on 28, you know, we've seen uh, more than one jaw per giga hash, and I believe that eventually somebody will even be able to do a sub 0 0.1 or 0 0.05. So 20x. Improvement on the same process. No, there is still a lot of to, to be done in terms of uh, non-standard cell design, custom design on, on, on a given process node. Um, so after we will see 16 nanometer or 40 nanometer miners, we will see um, if the incentive will be the Bitcoin price will be reasonable. We'll see a second generation 14 or 16, and third generation 14 and 16 before we see a 10 nanometer or 7 nanometer. Great. Well, I want to thank my panelists today. Appreciate a round of applause for our folks here.
take a 30-minute break, so uh, well, 25 minutes, so uh, please join us back.